Welcome to Run With It, BC's only running fitness and health program. On this month's episode, I was in conversation with Leslie Hopkins on pelvic health, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's go to our Doctor's Corner segment. Check this out. Joining me is Dr. Lee. She's an ear specialist at St. Paul's Hospital, and she's here today to talk about her career and how she maintains a healthy lifestyle. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Doctor's Corner. Thank you. Yeah, so when did your passion for ears begin? So I was a resident in Toronto when I was training for ear, nose, and throat through my residency. And initially I went into that thinking I wanted to do head and neck cancer. And I think it over time sort of changed as I became exposed to the ear. The ear is a fascinating place because it's microscopic. It has um, hearing and balance. And I really enjoyed the finer types of surgery with a microscope. So I ended up initially thinking I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon and oh. went from the largest bones in the body to the smallest bones in the body. And I think uh, I don't really know how that happened. I think often in life, it's your mentors that you find, and a lot of the ear surgeons at the time were happy people who seemed to love their job, and that enthusiasm, I think, is contagious. Yeah. So I don't really know how it happened, but it was one of those, you know, circuitous paths that I ended up where I am today. How does it make you feel, Dr. Lee, to you know, be successful and, and help someone treat, you know, and they're going through after ear surgery and it's... Yeah, I'm, I, I do feel very privileged with my job. I think I have uh, a very unique ability to help people here. Um, and cochlear implants or other types of ear surgeries is really a very rewarding thing to be able to give someone back that sense. <laughs> Hearing is such an important part of how we are as humans and how we communicate, even just like this. Um, not, it doesn't always have to be verbal, you know. There's sign language in other ways, but communication is a huge part of who we are as humans. And you know, you know, suffering hearing loss can, you know, affect your, your life, right? It can affect all activities. For sure. I think hearing loss is one of those invisible disabilities, and that's why it's hard. Um, and I think a lot of my patients suffer with that and they're always having to remind their loved ones that they're hard of hearing. But if you have a cast, people can tell that you're, you have a disability or if you're in a wheelchair or if, if you're visually impaired, often there's signs that there is a disability. But with hearing loss, it can go unnoticed and I think that's mm. difficult for people. Um, and I think it's not well understood by society. I think it's, there's a lot of discrimination that happens. For people that have hearing loss, um, people think if you put a hearing aid in, then you're just as good. It's sort of like with glasses, how it might just fix everything. But hearing aids aren't always the perfect solution. And there's some people that even with hearing aids still can't hear because it, it may amplify sound, but it's muffled for them. So I think there's a lot of misconceptions about hearing loss and how people handle it. Yes, and, and let's talk about um, types of um, ear disorders. Sure. Um, ear disorders, that's a huge topic. Uh, so the ear itself has uh, the hearing apparatus, but then there's also the balance apparatus. Mm. So the ear disorders are, that's a massive topic that would require an extensive amount of your time. <laughs> but from a hearing perspective, you can sort of think about how we hear and what can go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So you can have problems anywhere from the eardrum inward to the organ of hearing, the ear bones, or the nerve of hearing, or even the processing centers in the brain that process speech and sound. So it's really um, a diverse overview. Um, but more often than not, we're seeing people that have problems with either their eardrum or their ear bones that has caused hearing loss or uh, hearing loss within the organ of hearing, either from a multitude of etiologies that can cause that. Can you share some success stories with us? Sure. Um, you know, do I remember, I remember some individual success stories. I think for me, um, the patients who are not just have hearing loss, but the ones that aren't even helped with hearing aids, 
So those patients that have cochlear implants where they have no hearing and the hearing aids don't hurt, uh, help them anymore. Mm. Um, for them, I think it's a joy just to be able to be a part of a conversation again. And some of the best stories I ever have is how patients are so happy to be able to hear themselves pee yeah. or knowing when their fart makes a noise as opposed to when it doesn't <laughs> make a noise so that they know, so that they know, you know, can anyone hear that? It's the funny little things that you take for granted. Thank you very much for coming on the show okay. and I'd uh, like you to come back. Sure, no problem. Okay, <laughs> okay, and we'll be right back. Joining me is Leslie Hopkins. She's the founder of Confident Core Fitness and she's a certified core exercise specialist. And she's here today to talk about pelvic health. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Thank you, Christine. I'm really yes. excited to be here. Yes, yeah. pelvic health is so important. I mean, for runners and people out there mm -hmm. working out. So let me ask you, when did your passion begin for pelvic health? So you mentioned pelvic health, and, and I really do have a passion for pelvic health because good pelvic health, Christine, number one, it enhances our sex life. Mm. And number two, it improves our athletic performance. It plays a crucial role in balance, maintaining our body alignment and control. And good pelvic health can help to uh, alleviate issues like incontinence, back pain, pelvic pain, or hip pain. So good pelvic, it's, it's my passion. Um, it, it started about six years ago, so to answer your question, <laughs> it started about six years ago when I went through menopause. And I just don't want everybody to think it's a problem with older people because, you know, when we get older, we our hormone, level, hormone levels change, uh, testosterone in men, uh, estrogen in women, and it does, um, you know, our connected uh, tissue uh, system is affected by it, our muscle strength, um, it can be affected by it, but pelvic health issues can happen to anyone regardless of age, at any stage in life, regardless of sex. Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned to you when we were talking earlier, yes. uh, before our interview, is that um, there was a study, there's been a number of studies done, but an, a study done on uh, about 311, to be precise, female triathletes mm -hmm. who were actively training for a triathlon at the time. And it was done by the American Urogynecological, oh, that's yes. one of those tongue twister words for me, <laughs> so society. And one third of those women reported pelvic health issues like mm. urinary incontinence, uh, fecal incontinence, and also um, prolapse. So it's not important to get into any of those, but one third of women actively training for a triathlon, and they were ages 35 to 44. Wow. So, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it's, a, it's about improving your quality of life, and it's uh, getting rid of the stigma and increasing awareness and this is where you come in and we we talked about core uh right. core breathing how important it is to breathe for your core exactly a lot of people you know are starting to understand that the core is not just abdominals mm -hmm. but it, the, so the core is actually a group of four muscles abdominals com uh, compose the, the front they wrap around into the sides a group of spinal muscles in the back or the back of the core the base of your core are your pelvic floor muscles. They attach the tailbone to the pubic bone, uh, the two sitting bones to each other. They function like a little hammock. And then the top of the core is your diaphragm. Mm. And your diaphragm is the main muscle you use when you breathe. And your diaphragm is always moving. It's moving for us here, it's moving when we sleep, it's moving for when we run or participate in any athletic activity. The only way the diaphragm moves is to lower on an inhale to allow the lungs to fill with air and it lifts on an exhale. Mm -hmm. So when I teach the core breath, I start to teach a, um, a relationship between those four core muscles. So they start to function together as a team. Because one of, when one of those muscles don't function like they should, that's when dysfunction occurs, like pelvic health issues or chronic back pain, hip pain, and pelvic pain. So it can be related to a dysfunction in one of those core muscles. Mm -hmm. So the core breath kind of unites those muscles. And then I teach movement-based exercises, mm. because it's one thing just to sit around and breathe. But really, yes. we want to move, and we want to feel that we can move to the rhythm of the breath is what I teach, and pretty soon that becomes just a, a natural way of breathing, especially when you're uh, doing an athletic pursuit. Right. Or even lifting something or heavy up or something like that. Yeah. Right, and you know, uh, athletes, you'll be working out in the gym or going for a run, but you're kind of not really improving because you're not breathing properly. Right. So what are some ways, like, I mean, take a deep breath in, take a breath out, <laughs> like, how does that work, Leslie? Yeah. So 
I invite you. I'll, I'm going to invite you just to kind of follow along if you'd like, but um, I'm not going to do it with you, your viewers. I'm going to sit with my legs uncrossed. My feet are quite wide. And I'm at the front of my chair, so I can feel my two sitting bones. So just remember the pelvic floor muscles attach those two sitting bones to each other. And I'm going to be giving you some cues of what the pelvic mm -hmm. floor as we go along. Um, just to kind of make it, I'm going to say unisex cues. I'm going to almost have you envision, and I hope you like swimming. Yes, I do. <laughs> Good. That you're walking, it's a beautiful body of water. You're going to walk into the water. It's cold. You know, the water goes up to your shins, your knees, it's going up your thighs. It's just about to hit your genitals. And you kind of pull them up. Like men pull them up, women pull them up. And I want you to kind of notice that feeling. Because I'm going to get you to start to think about that almost walking into that body of warm water or cold water, sorry, and you're just about to get your tendrils in the water and you're going to, oh, I got to lift them. So that's going to happen on the exhale. So it's kind of like a spoiler alert, what's going to happen on the exhale. Mm -hmm. So I want you to feel you're just sitting nice and tall. So you're not slouching, you're sitting tall, your shoulders and neck are relaxed. And I'm going to just have you breathe in through the nose and then out through the mouth. And as you breathe in, I want you to really feel you're breathing into your lungs. Take a nice deep breath and feel your ribs expand. And as you exhale, you're just not dropping. And then I want you to kind of think about the area between your two sitting bones. You're inhaling to notice what goes on between your two sitting bones, but as you exhale, think about that body of cold water, and I want you to lift your pelvic floor away from the chair, that's on your exhale, and on an inhale, let it go. So as you exhale, there's a feeling of lifting away from the chair, and then inhale, let it go. And I can't stress enough about letting it go. So my pelvic health issues started as just a kind of Take a little, as a Pilates instructor, I've been mm. teaching Pilates for about 18 years, I had taught my abdominal muscles to fire or chronically be active so much that that's what created my dysfunction. I had to learn to let my abs go. So, you know, sometimes I'll put my hands on my lower belly, you kind of take a nice deep breath in, feel the ribs expand. As you exhale, excuse me, I want you to feel you lift away from the floor and I want you to feel you, or, or the, the chair, and you pull your belly away from your hands. But on inhale, let it go. Kind of let your mm. belly relax, let your pelvic floor in a way descend. And as you exhale, I want you to feel you lift. If you thought about that body of cold water, you pull your belly away from your hand on your exhale, but inhale, let it go, kind of let it relax. So when you're doing this type of training, I like to sit on something hard. You can get you a tactile aid or a big exercise ball. Yes. You know, you can kind of feel that there's a feeling of something between your two sitting bones and even keep your hands on your lower belly just to kind of feel the feeling of contraction, lifting and pulling away on the exhale. So that's on the exhale and inhale, let it go. Mm. So that's the core breath. Um, yeah. Yes, good, good I'm, information. I mean, mm -hmm. would you do it before the exercise or do it after? Does it matter? You know what? It's probably a good thing to do just before you go for mm -hmm. a run, just before you start to work out. It's just to kind of ignite the core, so you get an idea of. And then the core, the more you do it, the more natural it feels. Yes, I can mm -hmm. feel it. I mean, I've done. <laughs> it, it's it relaxes. I felt relaxed and good. and it, you know as we said, it's it's there are many benefits for it. And so, what other services do you provide? Um, other services I provide. So I'm a, I, I facilitate workshops. I, I also teach Pilates. I now call it pelvic floor Pilates. Mm. I've, d I've really changed the way I teach Pilates. There's a lot of moves in that uh, method of exercise that are not um, overly friendly to the pelvic floor. So um, I, I help people understand that type of thing. I also uh, I've created some online programs as well, so I can work with people virtually. Uh, people can also choose to. Um, you know, buy a program and it's an evergreen program, which means yes. that you would just get it and you get to work on it on your own. But I also, and that's called, I, my program in that one is called Laugh Without Leaking. Laugh Without Leaking. Yes. Oh. So that was kind of one of my experiences in my pelvic health journey is um, that's, you know, I kind of noticed that one day on a family vacation with my kids who were young adults and someone said something funny and I laughed and I leaked and I <laughs> freaked. It was kind of like, what's going on here and that was kind of a perimenopausal area so that's where my journey started and that's why I named my program uh, Laugh, Laugh Without, Without Leaking. Leaking. It could be a comedy too. It could be, <laughs> yes. it could be definitely. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. that's wonderful and yeah. what, what's next for you Leslie? Um, what's next for me is that I'm also running uh, in January and also in February a program that I call Pelvictory. Mm. So it's a play on the word pelvic and victory. 
And basically it takes that Laugh Without Leaking program or the information in it and uh, gives uh, people access to me pro uh, online. So it's a weekly a webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, we meet, so exercises, instructional videos, and then I people get their homework. And then we meet after that for another week. So it's a four-week intensive where I take people through wow. online and they get access to me as well personally via email. And um, yeah, so that's it's kind of more of a personal approach, more of a way to get people to go through the program. Yes, and it's intensive too. Yes. So you're learning, you know, the tools from you. And how does it make you feel to be a role model? Like you, you're, you are definitely raising awareness, but how does it make you feel that you're helping others to improve their pelvic health? Mm -hmm. It uh, well, makes me feel great. You know, when I, I get some feedback from mm -hmm. women in particular, I'm a women's pelvic health advocate, but in particular, I, I really love it when women say, it's given me hope. Like, there couldn't be a better testimonial than that when I hear that quite a lot. It's given me hope that, um, that I can make a difference. So, yes. I mean, it's, it just makes me feel, yeah, great. Oh, that's wonderful. And, yeah. and if people want to reach out to you, where can they go? Uh, my website so is Confident Core Fitness. So it's, you know, www.confidentcorefitness.com. Um, there's a, obviously a contact page like everybody has on their website. Yes. So they could press that and contact me, send me an email. There's lots of information on that as well. I have a Facebook page, it's called Confident Core Fitness as well, and I also do weekly videos. Well, I have a number of videos on, on that that are yes. all pelvic floor friendly, so it's a way that you can kind of check out what I do um, online for, um, well, for free, because Facebook's for free, so it's a great venue for uh, yes. people like me and Solopreneur, that it's a way to get our stuff, our information out there. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much, and we love you for, you know, to come back. Oh, uh, yes, thank you. for sure. Yeah. So, thank you, Leslie. You are welcome. Yeah, and we'll be right back after this break. Is Jackie D. She is the co-founder of Everything TV, and she's the founder of Every Rea Thing T uh, School. And she's here today to talk about her roles, her many roles, and how she maintains a healthy lifestyle. Welcome to the show, Jackie. Well, thank you for having me, Christine. Oh. It's lovely being here. <laughs> oh. And we're here at BCIT Broadcast Center, and uh, I'm excited to have you on the show. So, where did the name come from? Well, every Rhea thing comes from, as you can see, Rhea, that's the center. That's the main focus of the name. Because when we started the show, we wanted it to be about so many things. But because at that time when we started the show, Rhea was the host. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we wanted to make sure that it still was sort of her show because it was offered to her as a show. They wanted her to initially have a uh, some sort of a variety show where she would sing for 30 minutes and guess some people who would sing. And she goes like, no, mom, I sing once and that's it. Everybody will already be like, okay, enough. So <laughs> she said, I want it to be a platform to feature the young. So we still kept the name every a thing to this day. Yeah. yeah, so you interview, you cover events, you interview celebrities, and and how does it make you feel to, uh, you know, that you're inspiring others? You know, I was always thinking that if you, it's a blessing to have some skills, some talent, some resources, right? But once you actually start doing something good, that's when you feel that it's really rewarding and that you have a legacy. Because that was really our intention at the start. Like, we wanted to have a platform where we can recognize people who normally wouldn't be seen. Mm -hmm. That was the initial plan. And eventually we got people who are uh, known, like celebrities, and then we would cover events, you're right. We support a lot of causes because we want want to make sure that we have social awareness at all times. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to spread. Like use your talent for the good of the community and mm -hmm. for others. Like um, Variety Club. Um, yes. Leo was Amanda Todd Legacy is one of our beneficiaries uh, uh, when we have uh, projects, Looking Glass Foundation mm -hmm. and uh, Anxiety BC. So mental health is at the forefront of our advocacies. And that's why we try to be healthy, yes. healthy mind healthy body yes. like you yes <laughs> and on that note how do you maintain your stamina well many people <laughs> always ask me what did you have because I'm having that <laughs> I, go, I honestly have no idea I think well 
I think it's the fact that I work with a lot of young people and um, and that's why I stay youthful when it comes to my plans and you know um, I think it keeps me focused on the energy that's within and I have so much passion for so many things and for me time is very valuable I'm like my doctor said I have ADHD in a positive way because I can't stop doing things. <laughs> and I think the exercise and I eat well, the entire family eats well. We started to adopt a healthy lifestyle since 2018. Wonderful. So that's good. Prior to that, we weren't really, really healthy. So <laughs> I'm very happy about now. Yes, and tell us a typical day for you. For me, okay, well, I, I have a nine to five job. Aside from that, I, you know, you're a mom, you have a family to take care of, we have a dog. And before or after work, I'm definitely working on everything. I partly manage Ria's uh, singing career, but she's an adult now, so she mostly does her meetings and all that stuff. But yeah, I, I wake up very early, like five, 5.30. I sleep at like two in the morning sometimes, so <laughs> I can go on. I can have an, a very dynamic day with three hours of sleep, sometimes two days without sleep. So I don't know where I'm getting my energy, but I do drink coffee without sugar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think it's the passion. It's the one that inspires me, that drives me. Like, I gotta get this going, because tomorrow there'll be something different to do. It's always like, I always have a timetable. That's, that's my secret. That's wonderful. So that's your secret ingredient. Yes. You have to have that passion in you. Yes. Inspiration. That's the best. It's priceless. Everything else follows. Yes. Yeah. And Jack, you have a background in performing arts. So tell yes. us about that. Oh my gosh, yes. I love that. That's my <laughs> most I think that's my secret too, because I've always I'm always an artist and I really don't talk about that. Um because you know you want to put in the four, you, you know you want to focus on the show, the guests, the host. So I'm just behind writing scripts. But I took dance since I was four. I studied my piano lessons since I was four, and um, and I learned to act. I took acting lessons. As I grew older, I focused more on drama, on acting, and public speaking. So I was an orator in my time. I would. Uh, do debates, I would do public speaking, mm -hmm. I would host here and there, I was an MC, so um, I was everywhere. I was in the spotlight. <laughs> and uh, my directors, I worked with really, really good directors in cinema, and they know that I would always look for the spotlight. They're gonna go like, okay, your role is supposed to be in the dark, so please move a little <laughs> bit. Thanks for watching. If you have a question or comment about today's program, go to our website on the screen. Until next time, Run With It. Run With It is sponsored by BC Sports Hall of Fame, BCIT Broadcast Center, Confident Core Fitness, and Mallory's Fashion Network.